Welcome back to the Now Morning Show at 6.40 a.m. and it's Tobago Thursdays. It's time for a conversation with no stranger to the show, Ambassador Nikosi Phillips, the founder of TT Youth Will Rise. And this morning, Ambassador is going to be sharing with us what's going on at the 67th CSW. Good morning, Ambassador, and welcome to the show. Good morning, good morning, and good morning to Trinidad and Tobago. Good morning to you. Good morning to TTT and the whole international arena. Good morning. Ah, that is the perfect way to cover everybody. How are you doing this morning? I am cold, I'm tired, and I'm, uh, I'm just drained, but I am going and ready to go again. Ah, well, agreed, because you know what we say, we get up and we show up every single time. So, Ambassador, exactly. tell us, what is the CSW 67? Well, the CSW 67 is the Commission of the Status of Women um, Around the World, where all women around the world, women leaders, um, NGO feminist groups, soroptimist groups, they come together and they discuss, they bring treaties, they sign treaties, they discuss about women's rights, women equality in the world, how women have, you know, stepped up the game of being leadership and on the leadership panels. So it's a, it's a long discussion and a discussion also on how some countries don't allow women to have power. Some countries are now allowing women to be on the political platform and you know, other different things. So the CSW is merely like a, a, where the women around the world, sometimes some men are there as well, because we have some countries where men are leaders and they come to speak on behalf of women all the, in the country. So it, it's a nice woman a leadership group or leadership um, committee that comes together and speak about the issues around women and the role of Trinidad and Tobago, uh, of, of the international market, sorry. <laughs> Well, to be fair, Trinidad and Tobago, of course, will be on your mind being your home and that you are, if I'm not mistaken, representing Trinidad and Tobago at this. Well, Trinidad and Tobago used to rise. I think there is a delegation from Trinidad and Tobago who is there. Uh, unfortunately, I was not selected by the delegation, so I'm representing or going under the auspices of the Pakistani um, ambassador for the NGO and also I'm representing under the South Africa um, um, delegation as well where the Pink Africa Foundation because they're the ones who would have accepted my letter and would have been accredited through them. Um, I think Trinidad and Tobago delegation was full and they could not have accepted me. So I had to go under them, but I was given the opportunity to represent Trinidad and Tobago Youth to Rise at the function and to carry the name of Trinidad and Tobago Youth to Rise. Wow. This is why you see when you first came on this morning, I said trailblazing, because I'm sure that you are one of the first, if not the first, to achieve something like this. So kudos to you, Ambassador. So is it... Is it different, as you, as you just mentioned specifically, that you're representing TT Youth Will Rise, which in fairness we can say is also representing us. Um, what is yeah. that like navigating and attending? Have you experienced anything different than you think you would have experienced if you'd gone in a different way? Yeah, I honestly, um, these, I, on, with this new navigation, I am now attending, there are something called parallel events. Parallel events are events outside of the UN but it's always on the UN grounds, whereby, for example, I've gone to the Lebanon meetings with the feminist group. I've um, also partnered with, I've teamed up with Taiwan Police Service and the Taiwan feminist group. And with the Taiwan, for example, um, in the meeting, I would have asked a question about the, the online, um, they have an online system where they track and they assist women who are abused and they have stalkers and they're not being protected by the police service. So the Taiwan police service who's heading of the feminist, feminist group, he gave this um, uh, the partnership agreement to, to start the partnership so I can learn some of the things that they were doing that is working in regards to online, um, a token of appreciation on our partnership. Um, in the in the Algeria, this um, um, Israel, Uganda, all the other meetings that I went to parallel, and I would have made a presentation or been a part of it, I would have got a, a level of partnership whereby I've met some of the organizations that fund their projects and they want to bring these, these services to Trinidad and Tobago through my NGO, and that is actually better than actually being on the UN grounds. 
it, it, it now gives me the level of representing and putting the name of Trinidad and Tobago. Because even in these little Lebanon meetings, the um, Algeria meetings, the Taiwan meetings, when I speak and when I say Trinidad and Tobago, they were like, Trinidad and Tobago. And then after everyone comes up to me and says, where is Tobago? What is Tobago? And then I start to show them what is Tobago because I would have gotten some memorabilia from the Trinidad um, Tourism Limited and the Tobago Tourism Limited. So when I show them the map and show them, they were amazed. Honestly, people still don't know what is Tobago, not even Trinidad, because they think Trinidad is a part of Jamaica still. So engaging in the conversation, people now are interested in Trinidad and Tobago. They've heard of it, but they've heard Carnival. That's the only thing they know about. So the, the, the navigation into these other groups and under the Pakistani and the South Africa Foundation, it is more better, it's more interactive than being at the UN where you just have a general assembly and things. So I honestly, I have learned a lot. I've improved even better from before than to now because I've gained a lot of level of partnership. I've got three to four um, sponsors um, who are willing to sponsor their program in Tobago. So it, it actually will talk better for me this way. This is fantastic to hear and congratulations because, of course, we know that with this, there is so much more that is going to come for Tobago and benefit. Now, Ambassador, <laughs> taking part, engaging with all these with all these um, attendees at this event, have you found that challenges that are faced in Trinidad and Tobago for women is similar to those with some of the countries that you've just expressed? Yes, it is. But... They have mechanisms in place. For example, when they, there is a protective system, a strong enforcement of the policies of the protection of the rights of women, but now in the conversations that I've went to, there is a strong policy for equality and protection for men. The conversation this year changed where they would have educated and they, they, they're putting the focus on the education of men because what they would have said, and I would have mentioned and asked the question in some of the policies. I asked the question, now you are putting the strain on the protection of women, but are we educating the men as to these protections and giving the protection to men? So the conversation this year literally changed. They also included LGBTQI community in it in regards to gender, because they're saying you know, gender is not just male and um, female. There's an execution of gender across the border, and they would have introduced that conversation, and it was very, um, I was very shocked in, in regards to that um, new development of the, they're now speaking about the types of gender that there are in, Trinidad, in the world. And the, as I said, what happening compared to difference in Tobago, Trinidad and Tobago, is there is no enforcement. There is no proper execution of the policies because if, I, if you look at, I think you saw a video where a man breached his order and went to attack his um, ex-wife or girlfriend, and you saw a man ha holding a dog with a hammer, and there was a protection order. What happens next to this man? And if he had killed the woman, what happens? There is no proper protection and proper um, enforcement of the laws and the policies. We just see that the government comes up with a policy because something happens to a woman or a child is abused. They come up with a policy, put it there, and there's no proper enforcement or execution of it. Um, what, what is happening in most of the countries the government system in these countries, they have a facility under the government that protects battered women and battered men. And there's no way a person can get into the facility to go and to continue to abuse the person. So I think the enforcement of the laws and policies is what is needed here in Trinidad and Tobago. We have a lackadaisical system where it's not properly executed. It's just coming up when something happens to a woman or a child, we just execute a policy and then that's about it. Ambassador, thank you so much for that. We need to have you back to continue this discussion. However, our time has come to an end. So all the best. Enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy the session. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful day, Trinidad Tobago. I'll be back at the end of the month because I'm also marketing Panicopia. And I will keep you on the informed of that. And I want to thank you guys so much for having me. You have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you so much. That's Ambassador Nikosi Phillips. This is the Now Morning Show. Stay tuned. There's more coming up.